Okay, so in this video, we will discuss general power series. Now recall that in the previous video, we looked at a very special and simple example of a power series, namely, the series from 0 to infinity, x to the n, which if we expand out, returns 1 plus x, plus x squared, plus x cubed, and so forth. And one thing that is noteworthy about this special power series is that it converges to the simple rational function 1 over 1 minus x on the open interval from negative 1 to 1. But this is a very special case of a power series. How do we construct in general any power series? And as we we're just about to see, there are two key ingredients to a power series. We have to pick first a center and then a sequence of coefficients. So we let x0 be a fixed real number and this will be the so-called center of the power series. and we need a sequence of coefficients. And we'll call the coefficient Cn. So n ranging from 0 to infinity. So if we expand out the terms of the sequence, this would be C0, C1, C2, C3, and so forth. And all of these coefficients are real numbers. So they belong to the real numbers, and of course, as I've said, these are the so-called coefficients of the power series. And so once we have picked our center of the series and its sequence of coefficients, here's how we construct a general power series. So we look at summing n ranging from 0 to infinity the nth coefficient times the term x, so here x is the variable, x minus the center of the series, x0. x0 is again some fixed real number, and this is raised to the power n. And this is a general power series, where x0 is the center of the series, the center of the expansion, and the terms Cn, C0, C1, C2, C3, and so forth, form the so-called coefficients of this power series. And we can, of course, expand the series right by writing out the first few terms. So when n is 0, this will be C0. Now x minus x0 to the 0 is 1, so we get C0, the constant term of the expansion, plus when n is 1, C1 times x minus x0, plus when n is 2, c2 times x minus x0 squared, plus when n is 3, c3 times x minus x0 cubed, and so forth. And this is what we call a general power series. The coefficients can be anything you want, the center can be anything you want. This, of course, is the compact form of the series using sigma notation. This, of course, is the expanded form of the series by writing out the first few terms. Let's now look at a few examples by choosing some center and some sequence of terms to look at a few special examples of power series. One thing is worth noticing is n could begin at 5, 17, and so forth. This would still be a power series as, in some sense, as the coefficients can be anything you want, you could pick the first few coefficients to be 0 
and so these terms would simply vanish. So the starting point of such a series is always up to you, no matter what starting point you choose, whether it's 5, 17, 34, and so forth, the result is always called a power series. So suppose we take the center here to be 8, and we take as a formula for the coefficients of the power series, cn to be 1 over n factorial, and recall that 0 factorial is defined to be 1. So now, we get the power series, summing from 0 to infinity, the nth coefficient, 1 over n factorial, times x minus the center, in our case is 8, to the nth power. Now, we can combine these two terms together and write this more concisely as the sum from 0 to infinity of x minus 8 to the n over n factorial. And we can, of course, expand the first few terms of the series. When n is 0, x minus 8 to the 0 is 1, 0 factorial is 1, so here the constant term is 1, plus, then we'll have x minus 8, plus when n is 2, and here of course as 1 is 1, as 1 factorial is 1, plus when n is 2, x minus 8 squared over 2 factorial, which is 2, plus when n is 3, x minus 8 cubed, over 3 factorial, which is 6, and so forth. So this is, again, a special example of a power series where the center is 8 and the nth coefficient is 1 over n factorial. We could say now that our center is negative 3 and pick for the nth coefficient n over 2 to the n. Then we could construct the following series. So cn, n over 2 to the n, times x minus, and here you have to be careful, x minus the center, as the center is negative 3, this will give us x plus 3. To the n. And once again we can write out the first few terms of the series. Notice that in this case, when n is 0, this is 0, so this term is simply 0, so we can omit writing it out. Then it will be plus when n is 1, 1 over 2, so 1 half, times x plus 3, plus when n is 2, so 2 over 2 squared is 2 over 4, which is also 1 half, times x plus 3 squared, plus when n is 3, 3 over 2 cubed is 3 over 8, times x plus 3 cubed, and so forth. Let's look at one last example. C where we now take the center of the series to be equal to 0, and we take the nth coefficient to be the square root of n plus 1. Then the series will start summing again at 0. Cn, the nth coefficient, root of n plus 1, times x minus the center 0 to the n. Of course this looks silly, you can simply omit it and say this is x to the n. And we can expand the first few terms of the series, when n is 0, we have root of 1 times x to the 0 which is 1, so we get 1 plus when n is 1, root of 2 times x, plus when n is 3, uh, sorry, 2, root of 3 times x squared, plus 
plus when n is 3, root of 4, which is 2, times x cubed, and so forth. So in each case, we have a perfectly well-defined power series, as long as, and this is really the only requirement, when you have a power series, the coefficients can be any sequence of real numbers, as long as you're summing non-negative powers of x minus some real number, the result will be a power series, regardless of the starting point of the series. And that's it.